6th of Saturday. We're going to talk about all of that, and we start with the stunning political scandal that is rocking Capitol Hill and throwing a big wrench into the GOP's plans to keep control of the House. Republican Congressman Mark Foley abruptly resigned Friday after questionable emails he sent to a teenage boy were made public. Further complicating matters, Congressman Foley served as chairman of the Missing and Exploited Children's Caucus. And this past July, he introduced legislation to protect children from exploitation by adults over the Internet. Joining me now is Steve Thoma, chief political correspondent with Knight Ritter Newspapers. Hey, Steve, great to see you today. You know, Good to be here. Some of these exchanges with this teen in question are fairly innocuous and innocent enough. But the others, how graphic do they get? They're very graphic and they're very disturbing. I, I, in fact, they're not questionable. They're uh, they're downright offensive. They were he was preying on this young man. And uh, and I understand that there are some other teenagers now who have communications calling into question uh, Mark Foley and what he was doing specifically instant messages. Right. He used an IM, uh, an alias, a personal account to IM with these uh, young men, young boys. Uh, and more of them are coming forward now that the story's out. Clearly, some people don't come forward uh, at first because they're embarrassed, they're ashamed. Uh, and often what happens in these stories is when one comes forward, then the others are, are going to come forward, too. And, and, Steve, I point out once again, there's no indication here that there was any sort of physical uh, predatory behavior, just this communication. It would be scandalous enough if the recipients of these emails were adults. In this case, though, they're underage. Exactly. I mean, there, we haven't seen any message where he wanted to actually meet with them in person. Uh, no, no suggestion or allegation yet that he ever did have uh, sexual contact with them. But these emails were very inappropriate. They were lewd. All right, Mark Foley, a very popular congressman there in Florida, and was considered a shoe in for re-election come November. So, what happens to his seat? Well, at the very least, I'd say the Democrats are likely to pick up that seat. Foley will remain on the ballot. They're already printed. The Republicans get to name a designee who would get the Republican votes, but uh, the name of a guy like Foley on the ballot is not going to go well. The Democrats have a, have a decent candidate, a guy named Tim Mahoney. He's written a check for $350,000 to self-finance his campaign. He's, uh, he's probably going to make a good run for that seat. But more than that, Contessa, there are, are troubling other questions in this story that are broader, and that's about the fact that the entire Republican leadership in the House may well have known about these charges against Tim, uh, Mark Foley yeah, let me for put as it long up, as a year. Let me put up the page who worked for Republican Representative Rodney Alexander of Louisiana. Representative Alexander said he learned of the email exchanges 10 or 11 months ago, and he told a Louisiana paper that at that point he, quote, notified the House leadership that there might be potential problem, unquote. So the Republican leadership gets a, a heads up about this. Why are we just learning about it? Why would they let it get this close to the race, to the well, election? I think Exactly. That's the big, the bigger question here. There are now reports that the Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, knew about this, that the uh, now Majority Leader, John Boehner, knew about it, that the head of the Republican political operation, Tom Reynolds, knew about it, and that the head of their page operation, which is for the high school boys, John Shimkus, knew about it, as long as, as six, eight, ten months ago, and that the only investigation they did was one of them went to Mark Foley and said, stop it, and he said, okay. That, that's reminiscent of the Catholic Church scandal, where, where they just trusted that, that, uh, that priests who were misbehaving would behave properly in the future. Or maybe they're just so desperate to keep those seats that they're willing to let it go. At, at any rate, the uh, investigation is just beginning into the story. Steve Thoma, thanks. Thank you. Stay